Hello there, my name is Hoggy. I'm 800k Mastery Points Moon Domain. My highest rank was Plat 1 during Season 9, and today I want to show you my favorite build in runes. So, I've played with these standard runes for a very long time, and I also suggest the grasp with my last two Mundo guides. I think this is still a quite good rune page actually if you want to play a scaling full tank Mundo. However, I've experimented a lot with all kind of other runes and since my Mundo playstyle is simply a bit more aggressive, I came to the conclusion that the best rune page for my personal taste is always going for the precision tree first. And as you can see, I'd mostly go for press the attack as my key rune. But why mostly you might ask? Well, as you can imagine, it's depending on your matchup and the uh, enemy team composition in total. So when their team is almost fully squishy and I'm also playing against someone not that tanky, and when I'm confident I can trade a lot and auto-attack a lot in the early game, I always go for press the attack. You'll especially catch many people off guard at level 1 already. If you skill your E first, and if they come too close, you'll fight them right away. The thing is that Mundo's E combined with PTA does a ton of damage and since it's also an auto track reset, you'll proc it super easily. If you're playing against more tankier champs, like Orn or Maokai for example, and you know you're gonna have longer trades and fights, then I'd always go for a Conqueror instead. But if I'm gonna have a really hard counter matchup and I know I won't be able to trade or fight my opponent early on, and I have to concede lane prior, for example against Nar or Timo, then I would recommend Fleet Footwork for the extra sustain. Besides that I always go Triumph, Legend Tenacity, which adds even more tenacity to Mundo's kit besides his W, and Last Stand, which also synergizes very well with Mundo's E, that also does more damage the lower you are. And in Resolve I always go Bone Plating when I'm against an AD champ, and also for better trading potential in early game, and when I'm against an AP champ I take Second Wind instead. And lastly I pick Overgrowth and usually some attack speed and adaptive force for easier farming and better trading, and either Armor or MR depending on my matchup. So now let's talk about my choice of summoner spells. I think there is nothing surprising about taking Teleport. What's different however, compared to most people, is that I actually prefer Ghost instead of Flash. Yes, Flash can be better situationally, but Ghost has more advantages in my opinion. For example, the cooldown is lower than Flash, you can chase enemies much better, especially in a long lane like the top lane. You can escape quite often, it also has great synergy with Mundo's ult, because both give him movement speed. So with Ghost and ult, you can outrun or run down basically everyone. And this reduces also one of Mundo's biggest weaknesses, to get kited. Next is the skill order. I usually either level up my E or my Q first, depending on my matchup. As I mentioned before, I like to skill my E first and also max it when I'm confident in my matchup and I wanna trade a lot, especially when I have PTA. But since the Q on level 1 is quite weak for last hitting minions from distance, I sometimes also put a few points in my Q occasionally, for example when I don't have so much HP anymore. In hard matchups however, where I have to play passively anyway, I max my Q first. And against tanks, maxing Q first is also more valuable thanks to the percentage damage of Mundo's cleaver. And then the last thing to max is always the W, of course. And let's jump into the item build now. If I chose PTA or Conqueror, I would always start with a Doran's Blade and a Potion. And in hard matchups when I have to sit back, I rather start with a Doran Shield instead. Hard matchups are basically all champs with true damage like Fiora or Vayne and also most ranged champs as well as Darius because of his damage over time with his 5 stack passive that makes it almost impossible to win any extended trades. And Klet can also be quite difficult because of his Q that adds grievous wounds which reduces Mundus heal and regeneration. So you either ban one of these mentioned champs, or you try to play around it and adapt your playstyle. The core items you mostly wanna buy are Spirit Visage, which also increases the heal Mundo gets from his ult, 
Sunfire Cape and Titanic Hydra for another auto attack reset besides Mundo's E, also giving you huge burst damage combined with PTA in your E. Which items you build first is always depending on your matchup and the rest of the enemy team. So against an AD champ you mostly get the Sunfire Cape first and against an AP champ the Spirit Visage. Titanic is a good second or third item, but if you're snowballing hard you could even consider buying it first. And then there are the situational items like Thornmail, Varmog, Srenduin, Stedman's Plate or Adaptive Helm. Especially Thornmail and the pre-item Bramble Vest is a very common item actually that you may need as early as possible because the current top laners have always some sort of heal from Conqueror their skills or items like the Blade of the Rune King. So this item could actually count as a core item as well nowadays. Moreover, if you play against Narp for example, a Sunfire Cape won't have as much impact of course if you can't reach him that easily. So that would also be a situation to go for a different armor item first, like Deadman's Blade or Thornmail. And lastly the choice of your boots is always depending on your opponents of course. Against heavy AD you buy ninja tabbies and against CC you get merc treads. And maybe I should also mention the typical items to counter Mundo. You should always be cautious when your enemies buy heal cut items like Morellos or Executioners or something that does percental damage like Blade of the Room King or Leandris. And Ignite is also a summoner spell that counters Mundo because it applies grievous wounds. So that's basically it. I hope you'll have as much fun and success like me playing Mundo, and if you have any further questions or annotations, just post them in the comments. As always, each kind of feedback is welcome, and I'm always happy if you have any suggestion on what I can improve. Till then, have a good time, stay healthy, and see you in the next video.